Okay, Brian, you are fast. <laughs> He's got it all together already, bringing October mist into our space, um, which really works particularly in a small space like this. So if you're dealing with a small bedroom space, let's talk a little bit about what you need to keep in mind. Absolutely. And we were talking earlier about how, you know, I picked the colors for our Gluckstein Home products uh, a year or two in advance. So yeah, this color... How do you do that? You're always working with fashion and, you know, what's happening in the world. We're all working on that. So this color was selected over a year and a half ago. And this is the... It's exactly the color of the year. It's amazing because it's almost like you're, you're not just forecasting a color. You're forecasting the state of the world. Yes. And so there is this idea that there is going to be a need for comfort and neutrality and maybe reinvigoration. Yes. And all of that is happening in your head when you create these sheets. So you're bang on with it. I think it's a lovely uh, color that works in a small space for a lot of reasons, but mostly because it's calm. It is calm and it's light and it light. has a reflection to it. There's a nice reflection to yes. the color. And when you're in small spaces, I mean, some people like them to be dark. I don't particularly like small spaces to be dark. Not if you're spending a lot of time in, in a powder room or something like that, you can go dramatic. Yeah. But in a bedroom, I still like it to be airy and more open. So this is a perfect color and it's mm. accented with the sheets. So when it comes to a headboard, mm -hmm. I like a headboard to be around 54 to 60 inches high. You can go to 48, but I like this height. In a small space, if you went too high, it would sort of overwhelm the space. It's already a dominant element in the room. Yeah. Don't go crazy with that because you want to be able to hang some art and things like that on Well, it. yeah, good point. So we are dealing with a small space bedroom, um, and so you have to be cognizant of that. This particular upholstered headboard, so which is very soft. in style right now, and I know you've got a tip for when your hair is all over the headboard. Yes. How do you clean that? Yes, you want a lint brush. So you get those roller <laughs> lint brushes. Everybody should have a roller lint brush for their headboard. <laughs> go and get one right now. Especially the last year when you've been eating in bed, yep. working in bed, yep. sleeping, get that lint brush and roll it along to get the, the, uh, the hair off of get that. Get that hair off And there. then when it comes to a small space, essential yeah. is to get a bed that has storage. So this has oh, a yeah. drawer at the foot of the bed and that's great for your clothes and your linens and things like that. Yeah. And be careful about the space you're choosing a storage bed for yeah. because a lot of uh, rooms are very small, especially in condos, where one wall or the windows can be right here. And if your drawers are on the side, you can't open them. Yeah. So that's why a storage drawer at the foot of the bed is probably best. See, I feel attacked when you say that because we've made that mistake. We made that mistake with Eva's bed. Uh, <laughs> one side, totally free, open space for the drawers. The other side, it's a uh, table like her nightstand is in the way of one of the drawers. So we just put like baby clothes and stuff she wants to keep forever in there. But you've got a, a great solution for that as well because how does that table, that nightstand work? Yes, well we have this table here. When it comes to small spaces, you don't have room for a, you know, a, a, a drawers and a night yeah. table. So I love this one. It is a mobile, it's on the wall, it's a swing arm. It has a great tray, you can put your computer on it, small things like that. Um, you can tuck it out of the way or bring it closer. But it gives again, a sense of airiness to the space yeah. and then on the other side we chose a table so just try to keep it very light when it comes to the night tables when it comes to a small space you're not doing like a big chunky as you mentioned anything with drawers this is all you really need and some of us would think well I need a bigger nightstand I need a bigger night table because I got a big lamp so you solve that problem as well. How do you solve that problem? Well, we've seen the trend a lot in the last few years of doing alternative ways of lighting the bedroom when it comes to lamps. Yeah. So if you have a big night table and you have lots of space, great, have a lamp. I like sconces on either side or pendants hanging from the ceiling. And when we designed these, these are for Gluckstein Elements for Home Depot Canada, um, I like a linen shade because a linen shade is going to allow the light to come through it. And also mount it so it's at the same lesson we have with lamps, where the lamp shade should be here. Yes. The light should be at your shoulder level, your eye level. The same with the sconces. So don't mount the sconces the same way you do in the bathroom or the foyer. Keep them low. I typically like to line them up with the top of the headboard. We're supposed to be reading before we go to bed. That's what I do. Is so that what I. you do? So like, take, get the phones away. 
Uh, you want a light that's going to be good so that you can be reading right for, before bed, and this really solves it as well. A lot of people don't do this, though. No, and I don't why know why. Why are more people doing sconces? It's just, it's so great, and even if you do have a night table, you have books on it, yeah. you have a clock on it, and things yes. like that. This really frees up the space, and there's a lightness to this. I also like when they're hanging from the ceiling, but you don't have to just have a lamp. And yeah. if you don't have hardwire, there's swing arms that have a cord cover that goes to the floor, you can plug them in. Yeah. So there are a lot of options for wall-mounted lights. Now, let's just talk a little bit about uh, the bedding here. We've talked about the color, but I need to talk about the setup. So we've got one, two, two three. three, four, five, no, six. No, you do have six. You do we have six. six pillows. Three layers. So I, three like to layers. Have, I like to have the Euro shams. I always like a Euro sham for the height. Yeah. Then I put the sleeping pillow behind this pillow because this is the one that gets all wrinkled. Yeah. But when I'm working in bed and doing the computer or whatever, yeah. I, I put this, oop, look at the labels. <laughs> I, I put this here so this still gets wrinkled and it doesn't matter. Yes. But um, I do like to hide the night, the pillowcase, especially if you're so using a, I. especially if you're using a sheet set like this yeah. that should be nice and crisp. Yeah. If you're doing linen bedding that's supposed to be wrinkled, it doesn't matter. So the key is, and I'm always reminding the kids of this, because of course I've stacked up their beds with way too many pillows. Because yeah, I'm their mom. It's the look. Um, always make sure this is the one that you're leaning on and having the fun with. This is the one that's going to be in the washing machine every weekend. This is the one that's exactly. constantly be going to be uh, turned over. So have some fun with this. And this one doesn't have to be washed. This is and part this of the duvet set. Washed. And this, if you go with the neutral headboard yeah. and and a and light bedding in a small space, yes. you can change this all the time and have different pops of color. Absolutely. Now, where is it all from, Mr. Yeah, Gluckstein? This is all Gluckstein home from Hudson's Bay. Very lovely, really good tip so people can live in, like, real comfort in their small bedroom spaces, and so as so many people are right now.